All right, good afternoon. We have here Mr. John Robinson, the world-acclaimed international DJ. John, for the benefit of the people who, don't, who may not know you, could you tell them more about yourself? Um, well, I have been a DJ pretty much since I was about 12 years old. That's when I started. Mm -hmm. uh, very humble beginnings, um, selling all my belongings to get enough money together to buy some gear and then starting to do little tiny gigs and, and building up from there. Um, I turned professional when I was about 17 and left UK and worked in different countries and tried to improve my craft and take it up a notch each time always looking to you know build and improve um with regards to the philippines i initially came here uh two days after the revolution mm, i okay. bought my ticket about a month before and then the revolution happened and <laughs> kind of hot-headed and young at that point and i was just, <laughs> i was completely on the course of i'm going i don't care what happens i'm gonna go so i came um and the maybe a month or two after I landed, started to work with ZigZag. And then from ZigZag, we did rumors. Um, after the Philippines, we lived in different places. I kind of used the blueprint of the Philippines in Japan and took that onto um, bigger and better things. A very similar career course there. Um, started off with clubs, learned how to produce and remix in Japan. Um, I did radio, had a TV show there, and recorded albums as an artist in Japan. Um, and that's pretty much it. My two main markets have always been um, the Philippines and Japan, you know, ever since those days. So regardless of where we've been living in the meantime, there's always been a lot of back and forth to Japan and Manila. And two years back, we returned home here to the Philippines. We live here now. We're based in Makati. Oh, okay. I see. So you started, there's, it's been almost 40 years, am I right? That you've been in, in DJ? <laughs> um, a, a little, little bit more than, yes. Oh, more than that, no? Yeah. It's, you said you're, you're here already. And it just so happened that, um, right now we're in the middle of this pandemic. All right. So, um... I understand from uh, Dod, uh, Dod that uh, you're trying to raise some funds through this. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sanctuary itself, the event, um, it was the day before lockdown. And I sort of had this kind of, I don't know, flash of inspiration, if you like. I kind of thought that, you know, what are we going to be doing for the next unknown number of weeks. And I'd seen the news stories of the Italians, you know, some of them singing from their balconies and performing from their balconies. Or we don't live in such a dense place where performing from a balcony would do any good. Probably somebody would throw something at me or shout at me yeah. rather than that we enjoy it. So it was a case of taking that inspiration. And on day one of lockdown, that's when we first went live. Um, I just set up my equipment on the roof of where we live and streamed it live. Um, and then I think it was either week two or week three, we realized that actually, you know, as well as giving people an escape, I mean, the whole idea of sanctuary is escapism to, to, to take us away from, you know, this uh, kind of dark reality we're in at the moment, but to take us back to a happier place. Yes. And we kind of got the idea that, hey, maybe we can help people at the same time. I mean, anything that we raise would be a mere drop in the ocean, but we have a platform and shame if we don't use it. So um, we started to do um, fundraising. Um, we initially, I think the first week, if I'm not mistaken, City of Manila were desperate for, uh, yeah. for funds. There's so much going on in Manila. So we helped City of Manila. I think we, there's a Approximately, we raised, I think, about 174, 175,000 for City of Manila. Oh, that's big. And then we followed up with other campaigns. We helped City of Valenzuela, um, province of Batangas. Um, we helped some of our um, Kababayan frontliners in the United States as well through our U.S. broadcast. We, we helped OWA a few weeks back 
and we are we're doing that again this weekend because the crisis at the airport and all of these poor OFWs who are just living under trees and the bridge just waiting to get home, you know, they need to be fed, they need to be looked after. And OWA is having a hard time funding this. Um, we also, some of those were the macro type things um, where, you know, you know you're helping, but you don't know how much because it's such a huge problem you're attacking. And then we, there's a charity that my wife and the family here is very passionate about. And that's the, um, an organization called the Missionaries of the Poor. And they run a shelter which looks after abandoned children with cerebral palsy. And one of the brothers who runs that organization called us and said, you know, we need help. And that one was more on the micro because we could, we knew exactly, you know, what we'd be doing and how we'd be helping them and making a huge difference in, in, in their, um, their day-to-day running of the place and just being able to function and, and, and feed the kids and, and buy medicine and diapers or whatever. So the move, I really like that. I really like the move to the micro type of causes where you can see the results of it. Um, this week though, as I said, we're back helping over because they really need it. But so far since we started, we've raised about 1.5 million pesos, which we're, we're very, you know, we're proud of. We know it's a tiny amount in the big picture, but yeah. coming from, you know, from our, you know, our, our viewers and our listeners, we're, 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 we're very proud that we've been able to do something worthy with it. So these, uh, these are coming from private, uh, the ones who watch you, the ones who... Oh, yeah, really? absolutely. That's it. I mean, the show, the show is free. Um, none of us who put the show on take a penny out of it. In fact, I think, I don't know how much money personally I've put into it because we started very um, humbly up on the roof deck. And then as it grew, tried to always improve and make it look a little bit better. So changed broadcast platforms a couple of times and um, built a green screen. And then we had the green screen, we needed lights. And then with the lights, you realize how bad your cameras are. So it's yeah. just like little by little adding to it. So um, we, we put that in. I, of course, I don't charge anything for it. This is what I can do for you know, from here, when we're all in the same situation. Dodo doesn't take anything from this. Pam in the States who promotes us for the US broadcast, she doesn't take anything from it. So anything that comes in very adamant and vehement about the point that every last centavo must go to who we say it's gonna go to. As anybody, I mean, individually, I mean, it's a, um, a reality that some more, most people now are in need of help. But have you ever encountered anyone who directly went to you for help? I mean, there have been. There have been some messages on, on, on FB. And there's so many people that, you know, so many organizations that have asked for help. Um, you know, we have a simple realization, realization that nobody can help everybody. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a sad truth. I mean, you'd love to be, I'd love to be, um, Bill Gates and have unlimited wealth and anybody who needs help, you can, you can dole it out. But you know, we, we just can, I'm in the same situation as everybody else. My type of business, if you don't earn sorry, if you don't work, you don't earn no gigs, no pay, there's no safety net whatsoever. So, I haven't earned a penny since lockdown started, and to be quite honest, I probably won't for the yes for the rest of the year because the U.S. gigs are cancelled, the Philippine gigs for the rest of the year are gone, the Japan gigs are gone as well. So we do what we can, but you know, it's it's like a Pandora's box. It, you, you just cannot you cannot help everybody much as you wish you could. So oh, true. So um, your gigs are during weekends. Is this during weekends or every day? Just, just weekends. Um, every weekends, we I do usually about five to six hours on a Friday night. Um, used to start at eight, but since we moved to GCQ, I pushed it back to nine. Mm -hmm. um, so I started last night at nine and finished, I think, just before three. Oh. I'll do the same thing again tonight. Mm -hmm. And then the tough one is to wake up on um, Saturday morning, uh, sorry, Sunday morning, because we go live again at 10 a.m. to line up with... Um, 
prime time in North America. Um, oh, yeah. So we do go again on Sunday. Um, I was doing a Wednesday one as well, but um, it may not look it, but doing, you know, it's, a, it's essentially, it's the same as performing in a gig. And I don't normally perform that long in a gig. I mean, it's great to have the, the freedom and liberation to sort of just play with things. I don't have to worry about a dance floor. I don't have to worry about, you know, a bar manager or a GM saying, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? It's just total freedom to, to take the show. And I think every show is a little bit different. It all takes its own path and its own character. Um, but it is, it is quite tiring. And I was doing a Wednesday as well. And I was finding I just couldn't, you know, the, the recovery time is, is, is a little long. And I'm, there's quite a lot of preparation before each show as well. So to take out one show, it freed up a lot of time. So this week I was able to spend time working with, um, with Randy Santiago and we did the collaboration and the video instead. So it, it, it's, um, it, it was, it was actually very useful not to be playing on Wednesday this last week. Mm -hmm. So you had, you've had Randy Santiago, then tonight you'll have Martin Rivera. Yes. Are there any other artists you have lined up moving forward? Um, we're working on it. Um, there's, I can't say there's anybody confirmed yet, but maybe in a couple of days there will be. Um, it's, I mean, I, I have to give my deepest gratitude to Juan Miguel Salvador and the authority and to Randy and to Martin, who didn't even blink when I asked. It, mm. There was no hesitation from any of them whatsoever. It's, oh, let's do it, let's do it. And Juan Miguel, I don't know if you were able to see the video that he put together. I mean, he did a complete production piece. We were supposed to have done a live concert together, that which was canceled. So he wanted to give a flavor of that to his fans and our fans. So he really spent a lot of time and energy to do a, a beautiful production there. Um, same with Randy. Randy's, Randy was a, a, an encore performance yesterday and we did the, the collaboration video. And um, one Miguel Salvador introduced me uh, or reintroduced me to Martin. I, I know Martin, but we haven't seen each other for years. Oh. Um, and he reintroduced me to Martin by chat the other day and Martin was just, so what do you need? It's as simple as that, dude, that, that generous and that easy. Um, I said, well, if you'd like to do a few songs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Not half an hour later, three songs arrived as video files in, by, by Telegram. I mean, it was that quick. Um, and he'll go live to, to chat with us later in the show today. So um, really appreciative of, of the support from, from friends in the business. That would be great. I mean, looking forward, we don't have, we don't have any idea how long this uh, pandemic will remain. But from the looks of it, it's going to be a very long time. Yes. Okay. So um, right now you're doing this uh, online for free. Are you going to yes. do this until um, the pandemic is uh, upon us? Um, uh, it's a very good question. Um, we'll, do, we'll do Sanctuary until we can go back to clubs. Okay. Whether we'll do it three times a week, I can't promise that, but we will, we will do it. You know, let's hope we can continue it and grow it. Um, my, my hope and wish is that it always remains free to watch because you know our viewers have been so generous with their donations but um i know a lot of them aren't working i absolutely know it but they are also you know they're not working they're not earning but they can you know like we all do they can see that there are other people who are even worse off so even if it's a little bit what i often say in the broadcast is you know if you're out tonight and you're buying a drink Depends where you are, how social it is. If the drink is 50 pesos or 100 pesos or 200, it doesn't matter how big or how small. If you can donate something, that would be great. But if we can do this where it's free for the viewers, it would be awesome if we were able to gather at some point some kind of corporate sponsorship just so that on our side, we can keep the lights on, you know, we can, we can actually, because there are, there are expenses, there are expenses for the platforms that we use. Um, I mean, the electricity is, is in, insignificant. That's not a worry, but the other things mount up. I don't care so much about a TF, but we do need to be able to sort of pay our bills at some point. 
has anyone reached out to you to try and support your back you up? Um, not as yet. There's been something that Dodo is speaking with some group, and there's another couple of groups who are talking about something in July or so, but there's nothing locked in yet. Um, although I would like to say thank you to PLDT. Um, when we started, we were having a few issues, and um, within the space of a few days, I made a call to um, a friend who's high up in PLDT, and I think within two or three days, they'd supplied us with a brand new fiber line, oh. free of charge, to use for sanctuary. So um, that was really kind of them and much appreciated. Oh yeah, I mean, these days, uh, internet is very, very important and reliability Absolutely. of connection. Okay, Absolutely. So where do you get the energy? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. When you do these uh, mixes, you mix, right? I mean, yes. I, I tried it before, but I really suck. So how, how do you prepare for one? Um, it depends. It depends on the show. Um, in terms of mapping out where I'm going with the music, that I don't do. I do it all on feel. Um, and you, can, you can't map out five or six hours. So it, it, it's all on feel. Um, but doing three shows a week, I don't want it to be predictable. I don't want it to be the same show again and again and again. It would be so boring and people would, uh, not, why would they bother watching it? Watch a replay. So I try to keep it different and try to freshen it up each time. So um, I guess some of the prep would be to collect music. I mean, my retro collection is, is huge, um, but we've all heard those songs and we've all heard them in the original form. And I want to do gigs. I'm kind of a purist. If it's a retro gig, I like to play the original versions of the songs because that's, that's the whole purpose of a retro gig. But with the online shows and it being three times a week, it's interesting to pick up new interpretations, new remixes of these classic songs, things which they're not too far away. They, they maintain the sort of the heart and soul of it, if you like, but it's still fresh enough that people are like, wow, never heard this. This is cool. What is it? So um, that's probably one of the ways of prep trying to keep it fresh. Don't you get burned out? <laughs> Have you ever um, experienced burnout? Not, not yet. I mean, it's, it, it energizes me. The, we, we have a very, very vibrant community that I don't know if you've seen the chat messages on Twitch, but mm -hmm. um, Sunday is our, uh, is the, la the latest day for where I've got stats already. Sunday is our quieter day. Um, but last Sunday, there were 10,500 individual messages during the show. And the community, which they, they've named themselves, they call themselves sanctuarians. Mm. So the, um, the, the, the activity in the chat room is incredible. It's, it's crazy. Um, they're commenting about the mixes and the music, but then they go off on to reminiscing, they go off on food trips, they reminisce about different places, and it's just constant. They have um, certain things that they've created. They have got um, a virtual ledge, so when they're really enjoying it, they'll say, oh, the ledge is full, or somebody fell off the ledge where they're dancing and so on. So it's really <laughs> quite, quite fun um, what they're doing there. And I think that has been sort of the secret sauce, if you like, for Sanctuary, because if I look at the stats for a show, the engagement, it ramps up at the beginning when everybody comes online and the curve remains there. And to hold, to hold them there for five hours is astonishing. You know, engagement is a really difficult thing. So the, the community which they've built for themselves around it is, is really the secret sauce of, thank you, Sanctuarians who are Watch it, reading this or watching this oh, right they're now. Gonna, they're going to watch this, I'm sure. I'm going to share it to them. So, how was that? I mean, back in the 80s, am I right? <laughs> the, ru the rumors era, the rumors. Yes. How was the transition to the modern age now? I mean, right now, I guess you can see that everything is digital. How was the transition? How were you able to adjust? Um, I'm a techie by nature. Oh, okay. Um, I've always wanted to push the envelope when it comes to, um, it sounds like a grand word, but my art, my, I mean, my life is DJing. So I've always wanted to push the envelope as far as possible. Um, so I've usually, thankfully, managed to stay ahead of the curve. Um, 
I'm not sure if you're familiar with the digital vinyl, vinyl systems, things like Serato, which a lot of mm -hmm. DJs use. Um, when those things were still in development, I got word of them and I was able to get an early system. I had just like something out of a spy movie. I flew into the airport in Amsterdam. Somebody met me there with a attache case, which I picked up and took away. And that had um, a computer running a custom operating system. It was Linux and the digital vinyl system. And it was one of the first of its kind took that back and started using it in Japan. <laughs> the teachers were, what is that? Because we'd never seen something like that before. Um, so transitioning to new systems is not, is, is, is not a challenge. It's more exciting for me to, to, to really push the envelope. And I guess to a certain extent, um, doing this online, it's, it may sound weird performing to a camera rather than performing to an audience, but in my mind, it doesn't feel like I'm performing to that camera because the the feedback is instant and in real time. You don't get a crowd telling you, oh, that's a great mix or this is great or, oh, I love that or I hate that or whatever. But you see that all instantly. Um, if you play a song that people like, you see all of the hands go up mm -hmm. virtually uh, as icons in the chat. So it's it's different, but in some ways it's it's really fun. Mm. So you've been busy in everything. I just have to ask, how do you manage your time? I, I think you have uh, how many kids do you have? Three or four? Three. Three, three, three kids. kids. Then your that's your wife. I mean, your it seems like most of your time is dedicated on music, uh, reaching music. How do you manage your time? Um. I usually have plenty of time, to be honest. Oh, really? During lockdown, mm -hmm. I'm busier than I've ever been. I mean, this is <laughs> all, all encompassing, but it, it's really busy. Um, but I mean, my wife knows what's going on. She's an integral part of Sanctuary. She's mm -hmm. moderating the chats and oh, is, is part okay. of the whole thing. So um, she's a great big help for me there. Um, and then there's other self-assigned moderators who who run the chat as well so it's just grown exponentially but managing the time i mean that's that's what we have at the moment isn't it mm -hmm. i mean if if there's one thing one plus side i suppose of lockdown let's forget that we're not earning and all of that but mm -hmm. the plus side of lockdown is the gift of time it's opened up a lot of time for us um but i'd rather be putting my time and energy into this and being creative than, you know, vegging out and watching Netflix 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, that's true. You have three kids, any one of them following your footsteps? Well, in, in their own ways, I guess, each of them are doing related things. My son's in London. Um, he works for Mixcloud, which is a, a platform that oh, DJs yeah, yeah. use post it mixes um he also dj's in london and puts on events so th there's there's that um second child daughter shannon um she's moved back to the philippines about a year or so ago and she's moving into acting and she's starting um her first movie as soon as um shooting is allowed i think they're scheduled later in the month if all goes to plan and then my youngest, who's sitting next to me right here, is Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. um, Caitlin has been picked up by Star Magic, wow. and she's under um, she's under I M Agency as a model. So she's one of the pen shop beauty mm -hmm. pop uh, endorsers, mm -hmm. and um, she'll be she's looking to do things in that field as well. So I think in our, in their own way, the three of them have each kind of taken a little bit of the, the, the artsy kind of vibe, I guess. Oh, I see. So they, they go after your, you, they look up to you, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask them that. But <laughs> 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 well, um, what do you call this? Um, as far as, um, hold on. Um, of them, who do you think is it your your eldest? Do you think that's really following your footsteps as a DJ? Um, I guess so. I mean, he's he's DJing. Music is what 
he does. I mean, Mixcloud, he's a data strategist for Mixcloud and plots mm -hmm. their, you know, their future and this and that, but it's definitely very music related, but um, it didn't start out that way, you know, but um, I think when he was 16 or 17, I think we bought him um, a little basic controller to practice on. Before that, he was um, playing um, guitar and had a band and all. So I think that was sort of maybe, I don't know if that was what fired it or that was part of it, but um, he did that. And actually Shannon did what, she's into a very different type of music. She did one DJ gig um, recently herself, uh, an, an emo night at a place in Poblacion. Don't think Caitlin's interested in DJing yet, but we'll <laughs> see. She's shaking her head, but we'll, well see. I'll, I'll ask you later. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, for example, John, um, there are people who want to get you as their DJ. Would that be possible and how? Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, um, when pre-lockdown, I do a lot of gigs here, corporate and private parties and sort of half and half do gigs here and then have my tours in Japan. Um, obviously, those are off the cards at the moment, but um, somebody did reach out to me and said, could I do a virtual gig for them? So I was working hard to find a way that I can connect my little studio that we've built into Zoom so that we can do um, good quality. I mean, the video is fine, but the sound is usually the problem with Zoom. Um, but there is a way um, on the, you have to go up a level in Zoom to get a next level account and you can, you can enable original sound. So I can feed in very good quality sound and people will get that out. So absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's the only thing that we can do at the moment is virtual parties. So yeah, they can reach out and be happy to do that. How do they reach out to you? Email? Or um, they can reach out either directly or through Dodo. Um, oh, through Dodo. Yeah, absolutely. The big man. Yes. <laughs> so I think, um, okay, basically that's it. So maybe you can invite them to invite the ones who are going to watch this up to your uh, sanctuary parties. Absolutely. Well, sanctuary is a place to escape. It's a place to take you back to happier times and trigger those memories of when you were a little bit younger. Um, Sanctuary is mainly 80s, 90s, and early 2000s music. It's not set in stone. We might go a little bit either way around that, but um, it's a live virtual party every Friday and Saturday in the Philippines from 9 p.m. Um, you can watch it on Facebook, but Facebook cut off DJs every 30 minutes or so, yeah. um, which is a bit of a pain. I have to keep resetting it. So to watch it uninterrupted, it's Twitch dot tv forward slash official dj john robinson it's completely free and it's a blast all right thank you so much john